Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Ramoliotis, aka PD Beats. Hello and welcome to the Pop Turnative Podcast. It's the podcast where we have digital discussions, the worlds of sports, social media, pop culture, TV, film, everything really. As always, I'm your host, Peter Miliotis on Twitter. I go as PD Beats. This, of course, is the video podcast that this is the unique podcast where you can either watch it on YouTube or you can also just listen to it on iTunes, Spotify. So wherever you want to watch or listen, be sure to subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment and uh, all that stuff. So I'm going to introduce my guest. We're going to be talking some basketball. I'm really excited to be joined by a professional basketball player who currently plays for the Atlanta Dream in the WNBA. We are speaking to Renee Montgomery. Renee, welcome to Pop Alternative. Thank you. Thank you. That was a lot. What's your name again? Because that was, what would you say your name is? My name is Peter Romiliotis. It's very Greek. Okay, Peter Romiliotis. Golly, that's nice. Yeah, absolutely. But, you know, PD Beats is shorter. So PD Beats. Yeah, absolutely. I actually got that nickname because I I played drums growing up in some rock bands. And uh, I used to do, like, radio DJing. And I just said, I don't know, like, I played drums, PD Beats, DJ PD Beats. And it just kind of stuck and became my Twitter handle. I mean, I played the drums on Rock Band, the game, so I feel you. But we're connected. That's all. Mo- that's Big awesome. It. You know what? Sometimes when I'll play a song on Rock Band, like I'll just play drums, like I would play drums to it, and I don't. I would only get like seventy two percent. So I don't <laughs> like that. Yeah, that's not made for real music. Well, I'm playing. Newsflash. Play, yeah, like it's I, for people that don't know how to play. I know it's. It's, I don't know. I, I've had this conversation. It, it infuriates me to talk about that. So we'll move on. I, I just want, so I wanted to kind of start as an icebreaker and I kind of wanted to know about what, like, when did you kind of decide that you were interested in basketball? Was it at a very young age? Yeah, that would have to be, I would say 10, uh, 11. I kind of want to start playing basketball because my family, my sisters were playing and then when I started playing and I was terrible, I started to like it more because I'm like, I want to be good. So yeah, I started at a pretty young age, I'd say. No, absolutely. What that, what about it did you kind of like? Was it the speed? Was it, you know, the actually put the ball in the hoop? Was it the uh, overall game? Was there anything specifically that kind of drew you to it? Yeah, I mean, I think just the thinking of the game part, uh, I still don't even shoot the ball a lot, you know. Um, So it's not really the score. And I get off more when people score. And, like, if I'm setting somebody up for – if I get an assist. But just thinking the game, I think that's the interesting part because it's kind of like a chess match, even though I don't know how to play chess. But it's that's the phrase you're supposed to use. No, absolutely. (laughs) Chess is a very good phrase to use. Um. You, you, you know, we're seeing a lot of, we're seeing, you know, social media playing a big part in how we're finding out about sports and we're finding yeah. out about highlights. What do you kind of think as a professional athlete about some of the things that people are doing in terms of consuming sports on social media these days? Man, it's a gift and a curse, honestly. Um, it's crazy because, like, now we know we're in the heads of the athletes. You know, people are tweeting after games when they're upset and they should have just chilled out and probably not said something. Or it's the good news is the news travels fast where if somebody's announcing that they're going to be doing this, that, or the third, well, people know where we're going to be at for an event or what we're going to be doing. But, it, you know, it's it's it, there's always a pro and con to everything. I'm sure management wishes there was no such thing as social media because – People are tweeting, hmm, I don't like this team. I want to trade. And, you know, like they wake up in the morning like, oh, why did I say that? The news travels fast interests me. Has there kind of been a moment, whether it's with you or whether your teammates, that's kind of an example of that where, you know, you found out about a trade or some news that kind of like affected you in the locker room? I mean, I would just say me signing here to Atlanta. Uh, I, I basically made a video and to start out the video, I'm standing in a shirt kind of like this one. And so it was, I was a free agent and everybody I think probably assumed I was signing back with Minnesota or didn't know what I was going to do. And so when I pop up on a video on social media and it's like saying Atlanta across my chest, it's like, wait, what's happening? So I think, I think that's the part where I would say it's good. It's like me announcing to everyone at one time. I don't need to tell this person, that person It's like, here I am. Absolutely. One thing I've always wanted to 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 ask is on this show because I'm I'm from Canada, so we have a lot of hockey players, a lot of pro hockey players. Canada. 
Yeah, exactly. So uh, it's 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 amazing to uh, speak to basketball players about this because I always ask this question. So when I, we talk about a draft, right? Like the WNBA draft. You know, you went fourth overall the WNBA draft. What do you kind of think? Is there still that kind of label attached to the draft where um, people st- like still care about where they're drafted, or is it just is that kind of diminished and it's like? I'm just happy to be drafted, whether it's 150th or fourth. Because in hockey, that's kind of leaving a little bit. Like, obviously, people yeah. like it's cool to think of people going high, but they just want to get drafted. I mean, I think it depends on who you are. Uh, like, I mean, for some people that are, are mega stars, Kevin Durant what went number two or something like that. So for him, it was a big deal that he wasn't number one. There's some people that they're on the cusp of even maybe being in the league or not in the league. So they'll be excited just to get drafted if it's the third round, fourth round, any round. Um, Draymond Green can name like all 40 something people that were drafted ahead of him because, you know, he took that personal. For me, it was um, it was kind of a roller coaster because my team had just won a championship. And there was so much speculation about what was going to happen with me. Um, And I think it also adds a little bit more pressure when you're sitting in the room. Because, okay, you're sitting, somebody's name gets called, and you're like, all right. Somebody else's name gets called, all right. So if if you're sitting in the room and you don't get drafted in the first round, I think something like that kind of happened to, what, Tim Tebow? Where you're sitting in the room for a really long time, that matters. That matters just in the sense that, it, it can be embarrassing and like, all right, can somebody just pick me so I can get out of here? Like, that's kind of where it gets to at that point. Absolutely. So you're playing in Atlanta. It's kind of it's kind of cool because, you you know, you mentioned like the Super Bowl being in Atlanta. But another thing, too, is I have a lot of like actors and actresses on the show. And a lot of them actually live in Atlanta because a lot of shows are actually filmed in Atlanta. So Atlanta is just rocking. Yeah, Atlanta's booming. Um that that definitely helps uh considering where i'm trying to go but after basketball wise uh it, it helps a lot because this is the first year that i took the full season off of overseas um and and it's easy whenever i live here that i can go my acting classes what 10 minutes away from me it's not even far at all and there's so much going on where i'm shooting some indie films but i don't have to like travel to do it i'm here in atlanta and there's just so many opportunities for me to even just and a lot of stuff I'm doing is like beginner and it's independent. But for me, it's a big deal because it's my first experience in another field. Do you think that um, being a professional athlete kind of complements your like your acting and like kind of going into like, does that have anything to do with it at all? Do you think? I think so. And I just think being an athlete and being so disciplined on a day to day basis and learning how to study and learning how to, when I say study, I mean scouting reports and learning how to just, whenever you have an assignment, do it. Um, I think in acting, it also helps me because when I get a script, I break it down and I just flush it a bunch of times in my mind and read over it and then give it time to process. But there's this whole process I go through that like I'm very disciplined in. And I think whenever you're disciplined, you can do a lot of different things. No, absolutely. It's good that you mentioned discipline because I want to get into kind of school now because, you know, you played in the NCAA, you played for UConn, amazing what? school. <laughs> yeah. Um. So my question now is I find it interesting because I had, you know, Brittany Wagner from Last Chance You, that Netflix show, okay. on my show a couple of years ago, and we were talking about this. And I always said, you know, um, about school – You know, a lot of people are like, oh, man, like the actual stuff that I'm learning in school, I'm never going to use this. You know what I mean? I'm never going to use geometry. But I think people sometimes miss the point. It it, kind of teaches you how to kind of put together a schedule and balance things. You have a test on this day for, for student athletes. You have a, you have a, you have to get everything done because you guys are going for the championship tournament in a couple of weeks. So it kind of teaches you to kind of budget your time. Did you see it like that when you were uh, going to school at UConn? Well, the reason that people missed the point is because people weren't doing that. <laughs> a lot of people <laughs> in college weren't uh, budgeting their time. A lot of people were, were crunching as far as like, they had an assignment due on Tuesday, so all right, late Monday night, let's get this assignment done. So they might have missed the point because they actually weren't doing it. So maybe they weren't missing the point because this is not what they were doing at all. Uh, for me, I'm like a super planner. It's actually something that I wish I didn't do so much. I plan like my life, my day, next month. Like I'm a planner. So for me, I'm like I budget my time meticulously. Should get a shirt, super planner. Super planner. 
Love you. <laughs> um, no, but I do. <laughs> it's just something that I've found that like it makes me comfortable. So like you know the notes section in the iPhone. Like I probably have like two thousand five hundred notes, and they're all like something that I'm like planning on things to do tomorrow or the mm-hmm. thing to do. So for me, yeah, that was that's a way of life. How did you pl- how did, but how did you I mean you're the super planner but like for people that aren't the super planner like how did you see a lot of your teammates or a lot of like you know players that you played against like did you ever have conversations with them about budgeting their time because just the student athlete aspect of it just it's crazy that's yeah, two well, different I mean, lives it is you have two two jobs um well the thing about student athletes is we are we're given a lot of resources in a sense that there was a mandatory study hall when you're a freshman. I, uh, I don't know, like all schools are different, but when I was when I was there, you have mandatory study hall until you basically graduate out of that. So if you get a 3.0 GPA in the next year, you don't have mandatory study hall. Um, there's counselors that are checking up on us. There's all kinds of things that are given to us, resources to help us. Um, I never was like the pep talky pep talky. I was like, bro, you don't get your you don't get your grades. You're not playing, so you better like get it right. I don't care what you got to do to get them, but get your grades right. Um, but I, I, I was, I went to UConn and I don't, we didn't really have that problem. So you're gonna have to talk to some other schools that have people flunking out. We didn't, we didn't have those problems up at UConn. Uh, Was college ball always in the plans? Uh, yeah, because actually what the WNBA is 21, 22 years old, I'm 32. So when I was young, young, there wasn't even a WNBA. It, it happened when I, you know, when I was 10 or 11. So my whole plan was to go to school for free. I'm like, I want to go to school for free. I want to go to a nice school. That was the goal. And then boom, here comes a WNBA. And I'm like, I want to go to school for free. Cause I still didn't think, I didn't know if I was good enough yet for then. So I just kind of set my goal to go to school for free. Then when I got to UConn, I was like, yo, I'm trying to get paid to do this. Like this can be a whole job. Oh, Absolutely. In your job in the past, you had the honor and privilege of becoming a champion. Yeah. (laughs) That is something not to be taken for granted, but that is something that I'm sure is probably one of the best feelings of all time because that whole season kind of means something at the end. Can you even, can you even put what, what like words can you describe being a champion? Like that, that's just like the cream. That's just the cherry on top. Right. 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 Yeah, so I guess just imagine if you're at a job, right, and you're going to get a and, – and everybody kind of knows you're going to get a promotion on Friday. And then all of a sudden on Friday, not only do you get promoted, a.k.a. graduate, but you get a bonus on top of that. So that's kind of what it is. Like, like you already knew, like, at that point, I knew I was going to the WNBA. Like, that whole season, I kind of figured, yeah, I'm going to make it in the WNBA. Um, how that season went, I didn't know, but then it ended up we, we went undefeated and so it was like, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm going to the pros and I just won a championship. So that whole thing and my family was there to watch it. My family was at the draft. So that whole experience, yeah, yeah I, I don't take it for granted. And it is something that my parents, like just seeing how proud they were, that, I, that to me is everything. Like seeing how proud my parents are of me. I'm coming from West Virginia. It, it's a big deal. But what I find interesting is you have a lot of people that go through adversity in those seasons as well. You know, they had, you know, an injury or they kind of, um, you know, weren't, uh, you know, they had like a slow start and then they kind of creeped up. Like there's a lot of storylines that go into it as well. Yeah, there are. Um, our storyline was we were chugging along about to be the worst team in UConn history as far as, like, we didn't have a championship. Um, my Like, I was three years, we got knocked out in the Final Four, knocked out in the Elite Eight, and we were just stinking it up, in a sense, for, for UConn standards, and that's just – that's a whole other type of standard. But, um, yeah, like, championships are the goal at UConn, so I'm going into my senior year, like, are we going to be the worst class ever? Like, no thanks, you know? So we had added adversity ad- – Adversity going through just internal things like that's not what I want to go in the history books for no absolutely so I'm about to give you kind of the double it's just two questions in, in one in, in one are you ready for this <laughs> right. yeah I'm ready all right what is the best thing about being a professional athlete and what is the hardest thing about being a professional athlete all right the best thing about being a professional athlete is that we get I get to play a game and it's my job um, and they also, they, I mean, 
and we get to perform in front of a crowd. That's a cool thing that a lot of people don't do on a normal basis. Uh, the worst thing about being a professional athlete is that you're judged every day. So you can have a bad day at work and you go home and they're like, oh, who cares? And you go home and you watch your favorite show on Netflix or Hulu and you go on about your life. We have a bad day at the office and we go on Twitter and somebody's telling us we suck and we go on Instagram and somebody's saying, oh man, we bet on you guys. And you... So the worst thing is that you're judged at everything you do. No, absolutely. I'm smirking a little bit because I just looked at my screen and I just noticed your username. <laughs> Tell it for <laughs> <laughs> big mommy there you go yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah sorry beats. that's why i said big mommy's beats i knew you didn't get it yet but yeah big mommy beats yeah no i yeah now i could yeah i'm sorry it's <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those things it's funny you say it about the getting judged because you know in canada we have the world junior hockey championships which is basically like huge here it's the equivalent of like march madness is these kids under 20 it's the best players hawk players in the world renee playing for their countries and they're representing and canada because there's always pressure on us of hockey every year there's a lot of pressure it didn't go well for canada this year some unlucky bounces they got eliminated in the, in the quarterfinals and some of the players just dealt with unbelievable amount of disrespect and hate on social media I'm sure. and the worst part about it is their kids people don't care about that i'm telling you sports fans it's like sometimes i think they think we're robots like if we miss a shot that oh come on you missed that that's easy and they're saying that like like they could just make it you know like it's funny because you know a lot of people when you're on the outside looking in everything seems easy until you do it so yeah i'm not surprised i don't uh, people get mad at the spelling bee kids. <laughs> you couldn't, you couldn't smell a not amount of pee. Oh my god! We were, yeah, <laughs> I'm telling you, it's crazy. Fans are crazy, but that's the thing that makes sports great. Their passion and everything is. That's why it's called. They're called like the six man. Oh yeah, no, for sure. Yeah. It, passion is is huge. Um, who is Renee Montgomery off the court, and who is Renee Montgomery on the court? Oh man, I would say. Okay, so Renee Montgomery on the court, I'm like, hype man. Um, <laughs> I, I'm i like, if my teammates do something crazy, you would have thought I did it. I'm so hype. I'm screaming. I'm yelling. I'm dapping them up. Like, everything. Um, Off the court, it's more of the same. I'm a high-energy person in, in a sense. So, off the court, too, I'm still singing, dancing. Yeah, I'm a pretty high energy person. I'll admit that. Although I kind of like to stay in the house and keep to myself. So like I bring my friends and stuff here. Like my friends are coming over here for the Super Bowl, stuff like that to where I don't want to go out in the crowd. Like when you even ask me, am I going to the Super Bowl? There's no way I'm going to be in that market. <laughs> no chance. Yeah, you were, you were very, yeah, <laughs> you were very adamant about no not way. wanting. <laughs> no way. It doesn't even sound fun to me. I like. No, no thanks. But what sounds fun to me is my friends are going to come over here early and beat all the traffic, and we're just going to hang and eat and have fun and watch the game from the comforts of my own home. So, yeah, that's 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 fun to me. I don't no. I don't need to be out on the scene. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's going to be a good game. Every time, you know what, love them or hate them, every time the Patriots are in the Super Bowl, it is – it stuff happens. So it, it's, yeah. it's, it's yeah. one of those things. Yeah, I mean – I'm from West Virginia, so we don't really have a pro team, but I do know that like it's it's seeming like the Patriots have a residency at the Super Bowl. That it's just <laughs> like there's a spot there, they have a residency there. They already they, they booked their hotel at the beginning of the year. Where do where's the Super Bowl at? All right, Atlanta. Let, we want to stay at the Four Seasons. It's like that's just how it goes with them. So um, I mean, like you said, love it or hate it, they they've proven successful. A lot of people say they may cheat to do it. I don't look. I said neither, neither here nor there to me. Uh, I just want to see a high-scoring good game. I don't really care after that. No, oh, absolutely. Well, before I wrap up, I'm going to do something right now that I just feel like like What it, are we it, doing? I'm just going to I'm just I'm going to I'm going to ask you uh, I have a I have a joke I want I, I want to tell you oh, that God. It's funny. I, I I don't know. It's the first time I ever doing it. Do you want to hear a joke about construction, Renee? I'm going to hear it anyway. No, just go ahead. Yeah, sure. I'm working on it. I just dropped the dad joke. I'll pop turn in with Renee Montgomery from the Atlanta wait, Dream wait, of wait. the WNBA. Wait, I need, I have something. I have to talk to you. Okay, something. okay. All right, so 
Justin Bieber, do you, like, do you have connections with him? Because I need to talk to him because he came to one WNBA game. It wasn't mine. And I'm a little bit offended about that. I don't, unfortunately, know Justin Bieber. Oh, I thought you were from Canada. How does that work? I am from Canada. <laughs> but, so. No, I say that because when I go overseas and stuff, everybody always is like, this is when Obama was in office. Obama, you know Obama. And no, I'm I. Like, uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, no, I knew. I was I was just playing with it. I knew where you were going with it because I, get, I got that. Uh, but, but the thing is, someone asked me I went to, if I knew Drake personally. Because I'm from say, Canada. I wouldn't necessarily associate you with knowing Drake. No offense. I would put you more of a, you might know Bieber. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say Drake. I wouldn't, no, I wouldn't really do that, but I would just, you know. What are you, you listening? Know, what, what are you listening to lately, by the way? Oh, what's, man. What, what's, what's good that you're spinning before? Right you know, now, the song I play on repeat that I need to stop is called Remember Me by Jeremiah. And I'm going to play a little bit of it for you right now because you don't know that song, do you? No, I don't. So I know gonna, you don't. You're going to play you it. Okay. Yes, this I'm going to play it because awesome. I know you don't know it. Can you hear that? I, I can, yes. Yes. Uh, you see how I, it was ready because it's like on repeat, so I just had to press play. That's can you awesome. Sing? I can't sing, no. No, because this is a song, uh, this is a song you sing. Fortunate <laughs> <laughs> okay, I just wanted to give you a little, a little. That's so you oh know. man, this is a Jeremiah. Didn't he have a song like "Don't Tell Him"? Don't tell him. Don't, don't tell him. him. You even got yeah. to tell. Don't that was. Tell him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I know. <laughs> that, yes, you knew one. That was a track. Oh, this has been. This has been a. This has been one of my favorite episodes, but I, yes, I, I need, it's, it's a, I'm a, I can't say that all the time though, because then people will be, be upset and be like, what about our episode? You say that all the time. No, I don't. Right. That's the thing. Right. But seriously, Renee, this has been amazing. Thank you so much for coming on the Thanks show. I had a great time. Um, where can people follow you on social media? Where, what's all the right. handle? On Twitter and Instagram, it's the same as DA, the numbers 201. So the 21. The word uh, is absolutely. Well, thank you so much. And uh Okay, PD Beats. Yeah, well we'll have you come back on soon. Yeah, I'm there. I'm there. <laughs> absolutely. Well, this has been Pop Turnative, youtube.com slash pop turnative and iTunes or Spotify for the audio episodes. And until next time, this is Renee Montgomery, aka Big Mommy. Big and Mommy and Peter Vermiliotis, aka PD Beats, signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Popternative on YouTube. Be sure to like Popternative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.